the timing of the publication of this book is a good one because of the recession we all have to reevaluate and, and think about these values surrounding work. Um, Yes, I do think that a recession is a, is a time to reflect on our work, but I think at any point in your career um, uh, there's a chance to reflect on, on what mm -hmm. you're doing. And I think it's a, it's a part of the modern world that all of us are so ambitious about our careers mm -hmm. and there are so many opportunities at any time for changing your working life that I think most people, whether it's on a Sunday evening or on the train on the way into work or on the train on the way back from work, will probably at some point think, why am I doing what I'm doing? What's this for? What, what would it be like to do something else? Uh, what's, what are other people's jobs like? And I think these are questions which are just a feature of the modern psychological landscape. Now, alienation, there's a lot of that in your book. It's not in a heavy-handed manner, but it's there all the time. Uh, what it just means that, you know, 200 years ago, most of us knew where the things we used came from. We might even know the farmer. Mm. Um, we would know where the table we were eating on came from. We might know the carpenter personally. We know, might know who made our clothes. Nowadays, we probably don't know any of that. Um, you know, children famously ask whether, super, uh, uh, whether tomatoes grow in supermarkets. We just, we don't really know where stuff comes from. Uh, we don't really understand the world economy in which we're a part. We, of course, understand the economy financially. You know, you can read the Financial Times and it will explain interest rates and the flow of numbers, but we don't necessarily understand it as an experience. We don't know what it looks like. What does a car factory actually look like? What, what, is a, you know, what does a warehouse actually look like? And where, you know, how are things printed and how are things moved around? You know, no one really knows. And um, uh, I think that's sometimes regrettable because it means we don't understand the world we live in. As you say, it leads to a feeling of uh, alienation. You, you just think, mm, I, I, don't, I don't feel I understand the world in which I am. So I think you are a bit of a Marxist. <laughs> I, I think that uh, anyone who's interested in work and working mm -hmm. life um, has to be very interested in Marx, because Karl Marx, his, his solutions to the problem of work were hopeless, they just don't work. Mm -hmm. But his analysis of the problems of work remain completely relevant he, today. He totally understood certain key things. He understood the way in which jobs would become more specialised. As society evolved, more and more jobs would become just very narrow, specialised, very efficient, and there would be a cost to this, a human cost. Jobs would become more boring. He, he was very good at analysing the way that what makes a job interesting is that you can see it from the beginning to the end. Now, many of the jobs now, you can't see the journey. You know, like the cookies. Like the cookies. You know, in the olden days, if you if you were making cookies, uh, you had a shop and you bought the dough in the morning, and in mm -hmm. the afternoon you would sell your cookies to some kids, and by the evening you would be cleaning your oven, and you'd be starting again the next day. Uh, nowadays, if you work in the in the cookie business, these are huge multinational corporations where a typical employee will be employed maybe just to make stickers that go on the packet. Mm -hmm. That's all they will do all day and all night, make stickers for the thing or design the sticker. And in a way, this leads to a feeling of, what am I doing this for? What, what difference am I making? Um, you know, the old-fashioned baker knew that he could make a child happy. Another disproportion you discuss is that, and you do that in connection with the, the Belgian cookies, is that the amount of work that is put into something even often doesn't reflect the financial gain. Yes, I mean, um, there is a huge responsibility if you were employing somebody. Mm -hmm. As an employer, you basically bought somebody's time. And by buying somebody's time, you really bought somebody's life. Mm -hmm. So for, you know, 20,000 euros, you can start to buy a person. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing kind of power that is given to people freely. Um, and you can waste people's time and you can waste people's lives. And in that sense, kill them slowly. Mm -hmm. um, and it seemed relevant to talk about this idea, which it comes from Ruskin, um, in the context of this biscuit factory, which in many ways uh, does, on a bad day, seem to just swallow up people's lives. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the only part of the story, because at another level it also saves their lives by giving them jobs. Um, but uh, you always have to remember that, in a way. Um, but we live in a paradoxical world, which is both very rich, and so we think we have a lot of freedom to do anything. And also still, 
very close to survival for many, many people. Many people are still living in a way just as our ancestors lived, you know, a few meals away from real danger. One, one last question maybe, it may sound a bit, you know, banal, but is there any kind of practical advice you can uh, give people, you know, to, to deal better with the world of work? And I think it would be terribly helpful to just understand how, why the world of work is the way it is. Um, it's, uh, it's like a, a, a tropical storm. Imagine you're on a Caribbean island mm -hmm. and you're in a tropical storm. Um, understanding is a bit like a satellite in the sky. A satellite won't remove the storm, but it will tell you how big it is, where it's coming from and what, it, what it's doing. And I think that frequently in our work we don't have enough history we don't have enough sociology, we don't have enough sort of facts, so we don't, you know, we should read a bit of Marx to understand the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, we should uh, understand how odd the modern workplace is, the, the fact that it's the result of uh, one level of Christian, uh, Christian ideas about work, Protestant ideas principally about work, uh, the result of certain economic ideas about the division of labor. Uh, it's uh, at the same time um, very much shaped by uh, the pressures of competition and globalization, which uh, narrow jobs down into ever more specialized uh, uh, things. Uh, management theory, the theory of why organizations should be big and why, how you can get people to work together. All of this is kind of very interesting to, to read about. Now, it might, not, it might not tell you what to do next Monday, but it will at least kind of put your anxieties and doubts into a kind of context.